हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे we continue reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 4 chapter 22 text 35 tatrapi moksha evartha tatrapi moksha evartha atyanti katta yeshyate atyanti katta yeshyate travargyurtho yato nityam रिलीजन इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन एंड लिबरेशन लिबरेशन हैजेकन वेरी सीरियसली the other three are subject to destruction by the stringent law of nature death moksha or liberation has to be taken very seriously even at the sacrifice of the other three items as advised by sutta goswami in the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam religious principles are not based on success in economic development so what what are these four uh necessities that we are talking about the four principles uh dharma artha kam moksha that's right dharma artha moksha so dharma is not based on economic development as we were reading yesterday you know that Prabhupada is saying at least that the society should come to God consciousness because right now all we want to do is our economic development. But at least we should follow the the religious principles which we are not doing now because we are very attached to sense gratification. We go to God to the temple or churches for some economic reasons. Then again, economic development does not mean sense gratification. everything should be adjusted in such a way that we attain liberation therefore in this verse liberation moksha is stress we also have to understand that why are we following religious principles economic development sense gratification so that we can be um you know there there can be some equilibrium some balance in our minds so that we can develop our spiritual life it's it's just for that because liberation as is being pointed out is the important now we have to understand what is real liberation liberation real liberation doesn't mean that i'm going to go into the brahman i'm going to become light no real liberation means understanding i am part and parcel of krishna i'm going to engage in devotional service that is the beginning of real life so everything should be adjusted in such a way that we attain liberation therefore in this verse liberation moksha is stress the other three items are material and therefore subject to destruction even if somehow we accumulate a great bank balance in this life and possess many material things everything will be finished with death in bhagavad gita it is said that death is the supreme personality of godhead who ultimately takes away everything acquired by the materialistic person krishna says time i am and i have to i have come to destroy you know so time time is the impersonal form of krishna foolishly we do not care for this foolishly we are not afraid of death nor do we consider that death will take away everything acquired by the process of dharma artha and kam by dharma or pious activities we may be elevated to heavenly planets but this does not mean freedom from the clutches of birth death old age and disease so you know we like to do pious activities right we like to do some charity some penance we like to do pious activities why why do we like to do pious activities mm-hmm. 
to gain something, right? <clears throat> yeah, so that we can get the result, good result. Yeah. yeah. You know, because we know if we do pious activity, then we can enjoy more. We are going to get more opulence. And with the more opulence, we can enjoy more. So the reason we are doing pious activities is because we want to enjoy sense gratification. Right? Um, but we have to understand, even if we go to heavenly planets, you know, we may have a lot of sense gratification, a lot of opulence there. There's even more varieties of tastes, you know, in the higher planets. There's more colors there. Here in the earthly planet is limited. So the sense gratification that we can experience in the higher planets is much more. But it's going to finish. It's temporary. The purpose is that we can sacrifice our interests in Trivargya, religious principles, economic development, and sense gratification. But we cannot sacrifice the cause of liberation. Regarding liberation, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.9, Tyakto Deham Punar Jarma, Naiti. Liberation means that after giving up this body, one does not have to accept another material body. To the impersonalist, liberation mean, means merging into the existence of impersonal Brahman. But factually, this is not moksha because one has to again fall down into this material world from that impersonal position. So we can see, you know, the idea that that everyone has that I'm going to get moksha, I'm going to get mukti, but that is also just a temporary situation. It's only temporarily that we will be sitting in the Brahma Jyoti. We can't sit there permanently. And because there is no knowledge of devotional service, there's no knowledge of Krishna, even though reaching such a high, high level, reaching the spiritual sky, still we are going to fall down. One should therefore seek the shelter of the Supreme Personality of God and engage in his devotional service. That is real liberation. So real liberation is when we understand I am part and parcel of Krishna and engage in devotional service. So engaging in devotional service is on the liberated platform. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatmana Sochati Nakamchati Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu Mad Bhaktim Labate Param That on the Brahma Bhuta platform, one attains pure devotional service to me. When one understands I'm Brahman, I'm part and parcel of Krishna. So my only duty is to engage in Krishna's service. That's the liberated platform. And that's a permanent position. Once one reaches there, one does not fall from that position. He does not fall. That, that is liberation for real. The conclusion is that uh, we should not stress pious activities, economic development, and sense gratification, but should concern ourselves with approaching Lord Vishnu in his spiritual planets, of which the topmost is Golo Vrindavan, where Lord Krishna lives. Therefore, this Krishna consciousness movement is the greatest gift for persons who are actually desiring liberation. So Prabhupada is pointing out, you know, if we really desire liberation, then we need to become Krishna conscious. So that we can actually go into the spiritual world, into the spiritual planets, and not come back again to this material world. So by, we can see that how by hearing and chanting, we hear and chant, hear and chant. And we are hearing and chanting our way back home, back to God here. Brings us to the spiritual world. Is that okay? Any yes. questions? Okay. So we go on. Pare vare cha ye bhava. Pare agare cha ye bhava. Gunavyati karad anu. Gunavyati karad anu. Na tesham vidyate shemam. Na tesham vidyate shemam. Isha vidvam shita shisham. Isha vidvam shita 
Taashisham. We accept as blessings different states of higher life, distinguishing them from lower status states of life. But we should know that such distinctions exist only in relation to the interchange of the modes of material nature. Actually, these states of life have no permanent existence, for all of them will be destroyed by the Supreme Controller. In our material existence, we accept a higher form of life as a blessing and a lower form of form as a curse. This distinction of higher and lower only exists as long as the different material qualities, gunas, interact. In other words, by good activities, we are elevated to the higher planetary systems or to a higher standard of life good education, beautiful body, etc. These are the results of pious activities. Similarly, by impious activities, we remain illiterate, get ugly bodies, a poor standard of living, etc. But all these different states of life are under the laws of material nature through the interaction of the qualities of goodness, passion, and ignorance. So Prabhupada is helping us point out, you know, we say good, oh, this is so good and this is so bad. But then all our good and bad is based on the body because we are in the material world. So we are saying, oh, very good, uh, very good. Higher life on the higher planets, heavenly planets is so good. There's so much enjoyment. There is uh, so much beauty. Of course, it's good. You know, we feel really good. It feels nice. You can have more taste, more enjoyment, more, more pleasure. It feels good, right? More education, more beauty. And then, so those are the results of pious activities. And impious activities means not good results, right? Not looking very good, poor standard of living, illiterate, ugly. Ah, but then our good and bad, this is actually just uh, interaction of the modes of the nature. Whether heavenly planets or whether lower position, it's still interaction of the modes of nature. The soul remains the same. There is the, 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 the soul is indifferent to this. It's the modes that are acting. The spirit soul remains the same. You know, someone may be in a higher status of life or someone is in a lower status of life, but everyone's actually equal because each of us are spirit souls, part and parcel of Krishna. And whatever we are seeing outwardly, that is the modes of nature. Even like we see it, if someone is in the animal body, it's the modes are acting. Someone is, has taken some choices because of their choice, got in a particular kind of body. So, and then everything's happening under the modes of nature. However, all these qualities will cease to act at the time of dissolution of the entire cosmic manifestation. The Lord therefore says in Bhagavad Gita 8.16, Abrahma Bhavana Loka Punar Avartino Arjuna Mam Upetya Tukam Deya Punar Janma Navitya even though we elevate ourselves to the highest planetary system by scientific advancement of knowledge or by the religious principles of life, great sacrifices and creative activities, at the time of dissolution, these higher planetary systems and life on them will be destroyed. So, you know, we may endeavor really so hard. We may do certain types of tapasya, some penances. We may do some charity. We may try to get a lot of pious results, but the, the, we may do a lot of pious activity, but the result of this pious activity is still temporary. That's what we are trying to understand. I know, then does it mean that we should act impiously? That, oh, because pious activities are anyway temporary, let me act impiously. No, Bhagavatam is not telling us that. Bhagavatam is saying, rather... Pay attention, put your time and energy in devotional service, hear and chant. And of course, when we need to be pious, we do the pious duties, whatever are to be needed. 
according to time, place, and circumstance. But Bhagavatam is saying, invest energy in hearing and chanting so that we can get permanent results because after all, we are spirit souls. We are eternal. So by engaging in devotional service, the results are also eternal. In this verse, the words Isha Vidva Chita Shisham indicate that all such blessings will be destroyed by the Supreme Controller. We will not be protected our bodies, either in this planet or in another or in another planet will be destroyed. And again, we will have to remain for millions of years in an unconscious state within the body of Mahavishnu. So at the time of dissolution, all the lower planets, the earthly planets, up to heavenly planets, up to Swarpalo, they are all destroyed underwater. And where do we go? We living entities. Again, we are sleeping. Long, long sleep. For millions and millions of years. Where? Inside the body of Mahavishnu. And again, when the creation is manifested, we have to take birth in different species of life and begin our activities. Therefore, we should not be satisfied simply by a promotion to higher planetary systems. We should try to get out of the material cosmic manifestation to go to the spiritual world and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of God. So, you know, again, here the example of being promoted to a, a better prison cell. Does anyone remember that example? No? Uh, I don't get it. What is it? What example? That, that, you know, because here we are trying to understand that simply by going up to heavenly planets, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's we are still in the material world, right? After all, even though we go to the heavenly planets. So like how we give the example of being in the prison, you okay. know, the jail yeah. cell. Okay. Right. And then? After the term is finished and is released, right? Yeah, and then suppose, so we say, oh, but in my jail cell, I just have a normal bed. I don't have my big cushions and I don't have, a uh, down feather blanket and down feather pillows. I just have normal. I don't have Netflix and all that. I just have normal cable. You know, I just have a fan. I don't have AC. Uh, but then we get into a jail cell, which has, oh, wow, such, so much luxury, so many different channels to watch, so much. So it's a bigger jail cell. And it has more food, more buffet, more, you know, Buffet type of food is there. The bed is bigger. There's nice AC there. But after all, it's a jail cell. But we are feeling happy. Oh, I got promoted. You know? But it is, of course, it feels good. Yes. Of course, we do enjoy. Yes. But then also, it is temporary. So we can't put in all our time and energy in that. It's after all temporary. So we should try to get out of the material cosmic manifestation, go to the spiritual world and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is our highest achievement. We should not be attracted by anything material, higher or lower, but should consider them all on the same level. You know, so like how Krishna tells Arjuna, you, you do your duty, equipoise. There's happiness, there's distress, there's victory, there is gain. You do your duty for my satisfaction. So we continue to do our duties. We have our material duties, we do them. But we also have our spiritual duties. We have our spiritual duties to hear and chant. So we continue that. A real engagement should be in inquiring about the real purpose of life and rendering devotional service to the Lord. Yeah, we should have that inquiry. I am here. Why am I here? What am I doing in this material world? What happened? What's happening around me? Thus, we will be eternally blessed in our spiritual activities full of knowledge and bliss. 
Athato Brahma Jikyasa. No, the Vedanta Sutra begins with the aphorism. Now that we have a human life, let's begin inquiry into the truth. And Bhagavatam says that that is the beginning of human life. Regulated human civilization promotes Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. In human society, there must be religion. Without religion, human society is only animal society. You know, animals don't have, they don't have scriptures. They don't follow the four regulative principles. They don't need to. So then if we become like that, then Mother Nature will say, oh, well, then you can become take a body of an animal. No, why do you need to have a body of a human being? So economic development and sense gratification must be based on religious principles. When religion, economic development, and sense gratification are adjusted, liberation from this material birth, death, old age, and disease is assured. So we are seeing that we follow religious principles. Why? Not to stay in this world longer, but to get out of the world. Get economic development, yes, because we are in the material body, so we do need it. But the main point is what? Let's get out of the material world. Sense gratification, yes, we need it. You know, we, won't, we can't take food without salt, right? So as much as is needed, but the idea is to develop, to engage in devotional service. That our time and energy can be spent in engaging devotional service, developing our Krishna consciousness. In the present age of Kali, however, there is no question of religion and liberation. People have taken interest only in economic development and sense gratification. Therefore, despite sufficient economic development all over the world, dealings in human society have become almost animalistic. When everything becomes grossly animalistic, dissolution takes place. So we can see that's the current affairs of our society, the modern society that we live in. You know, the society is in a chaos. Someone will, everyone says, oh, this is, this is not good happening. This shouldn't happen. Or, you know, there's wars, pandemics, there's so much inequality. But why is all this? Because we have moved away from God. Because of that, if we can just again begin, um, try to become God conscious, then all the, all, all the chaos in the society will calm down. Mm -hmm. So then Prabhupada goes on to say this dissolution is to be accepted as Isha with Shita, Shisham, the Lord's so-called blessings of economic development and sense gratification will be conclusively dissolved by destruction. At the end of this Kalyu, the Lord will appear as the incarnation of Kalki, and his only business will be to kill all human beings on the surface of the globe. Why? Because at the end of Kali, practically everyone is going to be irreligious. Nobody is going to follow religious principles. We can already see now, it's so difficult to follow religious principles. Barely any of us follow but at this end of Kalyuk, mostly the entire population will be irreligious. So as Lord Chaitanya has come now 500 years ago to give us this mercy, chanting of the holy name, Kalki is not going to do that. He's not going to say chant and be happy and kill the demon in us. No. When Kalki comes, it's like finish. Everybody dies. And then the next Satya Yuga will begin by the few devotees that who will be living. After that killing, another golden age will begin. We should therefore know that our material activities are just like childish play. So we should take advantage of this Krishna consciousness movement that we have now. Take advantage of Lord Chaitanya's mercy. It's by his mercy we are able to hear and chant. So Taking his shelter, you continue to hear and chant. Children may play on the beach and the father will sit and watch this childish play. The construction of buildings with sand, the construction of walls and so many things. But finally the father will ask the children to come home. Then everything is destroyed. Persons who are too much addicted to the childish activities of economic development 
and sense gratification are sometimes especially favored by the Lord when he destroys the construction of these things. So we are like that, you know. We want to continue playing, playing, playing. Oh, I don't want to finish my play. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. You know, and like that, we take the children to play, you know, play a Lego, build sand castle or something. But when it's time to go, the parents tell the child, hey, time to go. The child may cry, wail, but the parent is going to say, no, it's playtime is over. So that's what happens to us. Um, so this purport is still longer. Do you all want to stop here and continue with it tomorrow? Since yeah. time is up. Yeah. yeah. Are there any comments? Are there any comments? Any question. questions? Yes. Question. How? I mean, we read that, okay, we must uh, get into you know, spirituality so that we have to go back to the original planet where Krishna is of all. Uh, we should not get into materialistic sense gratification, whatever we read, okay, but how? What is the formula? What is the secret medicine? Pure and chant. Pure and chant and association with devotees. Yeah. It's not easy in this Kali Yuga. Hearing and chanting in the association with devotees. But in this so, uh, Kali Yuga, like everybody is out working, it's not easy. Uh, so, but then that's the because reason. Maya, Maya Devi is very powerful and we can get distracted. As it is said in Bhagavad Gita, uh, you know, Arjuna tells Krishna that it's easier to control the direction of the wind, but it's not easy to control your mind. Mind is like a monkey. It keeps on jumping from, you know, tree to tree. So that is so true. And then Krishna tells him, yes, it is very difficult, but it's not impossible. Yes. Because Krishna is not going to suggest something which is impossible. Okay. And so that's why Krishna says, yes, you can. And he says, by constant practice and detachment. Constant practice and detachment. So we can't think that for example, the child has to learn to bike. Mm -hmm. He can't get first time the child is not going to start biking. Right. It will fall. Then it is. Exactly. Will fall, will again bike, will fall, will bike, and that goes on. But one day he will actually bike. Well, in this Kali Yuga, he gets fed up. He doesn't he doesn't try again. You know, that's the problem of this Kali Yuga. The Maya Devi is so powerful. Yes, Maya is very powerful. It's true. It's true. And all, again, it boils down to our choice, our desire. Krishna is always fulfilling our desire. The choice is ours. The free will is ours. Krishna never forces anyone. Yeah. Even after he spoke the Bhagavad Gita knowledge to yeah. Arjuna, and he told Arjuna, now I give you the knowledge. Knowledge. That's your choice. Now you, you decide what you want to do. And Arjuna chose to, go on the right path. to fight on behalf of Krishna. So, so association of devotees helps <clears throat> if at all we want. And if practically you're asking how we can hear and chant, we, we can begin small. We can say, okay, I, I can chant five minutes a day. I can chant 10 minutes a day. You know, we don't have to say, I'm going to chant two hours a day because we are never going to be able to start with that. Right. If we can start small or start small, I'm going to chant one mantra a day. And I'm going to gradually build it up to one round a day. So those are some practical things that we can adopt if we really want to. Right. The one of the audio uh, lectures I was listening on YouTube of Srila Prabhupada, he also mentions that, yes, Kirtanam, uh, you know, doing Harinam, association with devotees, and uh, he had a very good humor. He said that in Iskon, our weapon is prashadam, and gulab jamun is, is the bullets. Yeah, prashadam. You know, so when the when the body is taking in prashadam, you're more purified, yes. and you get automatically attracted to Krishna. Yes. So like that's that. right. Yes, but here, here, as much as you can, yeah. here devotional service begins by hearing, hear from the pure devotees. Hearing from the pure devotees, 
hopes and chanting. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Shla Prabhupada ki jai. Hare Krishna.